Got a pretty light trigger, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. The Tika is scary light. <laughs> All right guys, this is the second part to my Satterley load development uh, test load series. And what I used here was H4350, lit off by a Federal Premium Large Match Rifle Primer, and then shooting the 6.5 millimeter 147 grain ELD match from Hornady. These were loaded in my Atlas Development Group 65 Creedmoor. These are large rifle primer pockets. They do offer large and small. So, quick reminder as to what the Satterley load development actually is. Um, you load up, you're supposed to load up 10 rounds in 10th of a grain increments. What I actually did was load up like 16 rounds in 2 tenths of a grain increments. That way I could cover a little bit more of the powder charge range and get a better idea of what's going on. So, the charges I chose were from 38.2 all the way up to 41.2. That's a full grain over what the Hornady load data uh, calls for that I pulled off the internet for the 147 grain bullets with H4350. So I loaded up in two tenths increments, like I said, so it goes 38.2, 38.4, 38.6, all the way up to 41.2. I'm going to read off the velocities that my chronograph told me I was getting. Here's where everything goes wrong. I loaded these very meticulously, and since, since then, I've loaded up more rounds with the scale that I used for this, and I got awesome extreme spreads and very low standard deviations. So I know that the scale is good, and it actually gave me correct readings. But my chronograph on the Saturday load development day, it's an optical chronograph, and uh, if the lighting isn't just right, it really gives you weird numbers and gives lots of errors. And it was one of those days, unfortunately, because I took a lot of time to load up the Satterley development very meticulously, took my time, made sure I got everything right, I did all that I could. I get out there and my chronograph falls apart on me. Um, I shot four rounds of a load that I knew what the numbers should be, and it gave me exactly what those numbers should have been. 2,837 feet a second with a standard deviation of around 13 feet a second, and that's exactly what it gave me. 2837 SD of 13, so perfect, it's working. My chronograph's good to go. I then load up the 4350 rounds and start off with 38.2. I take a shot. First velocity says 2583. It's a little lower than I thought it was gonna be. Second shot, 2568. Now, I've increased my powder, but it said that I was going 30 feet a second slower. Interesting. Then it goes 25.98, which is faster than my first one. 25.89, we've again increased our powder, but dropped down on velocity. Then it goes from 25.89 to 27.52. Not outside the realm of possibilities for 6.5 Creedmoor, but that 100 foot per second jump, I never got one reading in 2,600 feet a second. Then it gave me two errors, which was really starting to frustrate me at this point. Then it told me 2887 with a charge of 39.6 grains. This is below Hornady's max charge, and I didn't believe it. I took another shot, 2700 even. So we've gone up, down, up, down, uh, jumped 100 feet up, then went another 100 feet up, and then we dropped 187 feet down again, 2874. So we've rocketed 170 feet back up, 2710, 100 feet slower, error, 2765. So we've gone 50, per, 50 feet per second up, 2878, which is kind of ridiculous. So we're way back up here again, 2798, we're down here again, 2781. So we're pretty close right there. Those, those might actually be that might be a decent reading. Um, but no, you're not going to get 3,000 feet a second with a 147 grain bullet in a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's not going to happen with my gun. Or at all, really. Um, then 27.81, error. And then finally, at my 41.2 grain increment, it told me that I got 3,348 feet a second out of my 6.5 Creedmoor. Which would be fantastic if that was within the realm of possibilities. But it's not, and my chronograph was being... An absolute meth head. Um, the thing was going crazy and telling me crazy numbers. So, Saturday load development went to crap. Good news is, I loaded up regular load development, how I do, I do four rounds and incremental grain increases, but I did learn some good things along the Saturday load development test. I shot them into a target. 
I didn't take a lot of time because once I chambered the round, I wanted to shoot it within about three seconds. I didn't want to allow the powder and brass to heat up to possibly change how the velocities were going. I shot these fairly quickly. Once I realized that my numbers were going to absolute crap, I just chambered it, shot it, chambered it, shot it. I didn't really care. But I was aiming pretty decently with a good rest, and I shot 16 rounds out of 17 into a 0.95 inch group. It knocked the center out of this paper. I'll show you in a second. But I held a really good group across a three grain increment charge. So I knew that 4350 and the 147s was actually going to shoot well. Also, I had the brass at this point and I could look at my primers and I could actually get a reading as to where the pressure, how the pressure looked at all these different charge weights. Starting off, it wasn't bad at all. Um, this rifle I have, the Uinta Precision UPR-10, it craters the primers, which is pretty common in 6.5 Creedmoor, but uh, it makes it easy to read like how much pressure is getting forced back. So this one's almost no cratering at all, and by the max charge, there's a little bit of a nipple sticking up from the cratering, so it's got a little bit of a sharp edge around it. Basically, once you start pushing it beyond this point, it's going to cut the primer, and gases are going to blow out the back side of the primer into the rifle, which is not a good thing. Um, if your rifle is doing that, Something's wrong. You need to stop shooting whatever ammo that is and figure out what's going on with it. Okay, so my lowest charge is right here. And I went up, and then up, up, and here's my max charge. So the highest charge was the full grain above Hornady's suggested data. You can see how that primer sticks out just a touch. Um, it's really starting to show pressure there. If we look at my lowest charge, nothing's sticking up. See, much less pressure here, which is good. So now I have an idea of where the pressure begins, and so I use these to decide what pressure level I actually wanted to shoot up to and uh, see what kind of ladder test I wanted to load since my Satterley load development went to crap. As we can see here, this is the Satterley load development. I shot 16 bullets into here and one of them straight out. Like I said, I wasn't taking like all the time in the world to make sure these were super accurate shots. I was actually holding my 10th minute. So my reticle has 10 MOA marked out on the right hand side. So I just put the 10 MOA dot right there, took a shot and then the bullets would land over here where there was nothing else and nothing would get in the way. So, I mean, not even my crosshairs and my scope and it still pulled together a really good looking group. So I knew that this combo was good. All right, since I wasn't sure if I could trust my chronograph, I decided to load up four charges of each uh, powder charge and see what kind of groups they would shoot. But I did shoot them over my chronograph, so I actually did get good data from this day because it was a little bit cloudy, maybe the sun wasn't shining down into the little sensor, and I got better readings. So this is a four shot group, and Man, three shots went right in next to each other. Really good looking. And then I had one flyer down here. That wasn't a pulled shot or anything. That's just how it shot onto paper. Um, so these average 2682 feet per second, 8.1 standard deviation. Um, I guess one of my shots actually had an error on the chronograph. So only three shots is what this average and that standard deviation came from but this was 39.6 grains of H4350 shooting the 147 grain uh, ELD match bullet. So I measure my groups top to bottom and left to right. So top to bottom was 0.79, left to right was 0.55, and uh, I add those together, divide them by two, which averages them, and that gives me a 0.67 MOA. So that's how I measure my groups. Now going from 39.6, up to 40. This one I shot a five shot group. So I have these three shooting the same hole right here. One just barely outside of there and then this one's not really that far outside of the three shot group. Again looking pretty good. Um, my average was 0.789 MOA. Now we're up to 2714 feet per second but all five shots went across the chronograph and got me good, gate, got me good data with a 5.8 feet per second standard deviation with 16 feet per second extreme spread. 40 grains of H4350, shooting awesome. And this is basically right at the limit of the pressure that I kind of like to see on the brass. I'm going in 0.4 grain increments. This is another four shot group. Um, this one seemed to open up a little bit. Um, these two shot pretty well. This third one's not bad, but this fourth one kind of opens the whole group up. 
27, 30 feet per second, 10 second standard, or 10 feet per second standard deviation, four shots of data. I didn't even measure this one. Um, 27, 46 feet per second. The group, not all that awesome. Five shot group right here, 40.8 grains, 7.5 feet standard deviation. Out of four groups that I shot, the worst standard deviation I got was 10 feet per second. Fantastic. I'm really happy with that because I think part of my problem shooting my 6.5 Creedmoor out to a mile was that uh, my standard deviations were causing them to go a little bit high, a little bit low. There's more to it than that, but I'm trying to find a low standard deviation, which is also why the Satterley load development is important is because once the powders level off in velocity, it's supposed to give you lower standard deviations. So I shot within the powder charges that I shot the Saturday low development, but I shot on the hotter end because I do want velocity to shoot really far. And I think that I'm going to go with this. This is my lowest standard deviation, my best group. And uh, I think it's really good looking. I got all five shots across the chronograph. Now I'm going to load up more and I'm going to do more chronograph data to see how the standard deviations look, maybe 15 or 20 shots. Obviously, it'll probably open up, but starting off with this look, starting off with this charge, I think we're going to be in good luck, and it's obviously shooting really well. So I learned about the Satterley load development originally from the 6.5 Guys uh, YouTube channel, and Scott Satterley goes on there, and he tells you important things to know about uh, trying to perform one of his tests, and basically he says you have to have your reloading method down to a science, I'm not the greatest hand loader in the world, don't get me wrong, but uh, I figured I could give it a test. And then he also said you need to have a really good chronograph. And I was like, well, we'll see if mine's up to the task. Um, on that day, it was not. On this range trip where I was shooting uh, my groups, I think that it probably would have worked that day. It just happened to be the lighting, but I had driven 50 miles out into the desert on the original trip, and I brought the Saturday load test, and it shot before a group. The four bullets I shot before the test all worked. I was 100% confident that it was going to work. Once I started shooting the H4350, problems occurred, and I don't know why, but it really made me mad, and it put me in a bad mood. Um, so I loaded up groups, went and shot those, because I knew if my chronograph didn't give me the data that I was looking for, I could at least see which ones were grouping better. Ultimately, I'm going to go with 40 grains of H4350, with a 147 ELD. It gave me really low standard deviations, which is what the Saturday low development is supposed to do anyway. So I've pretty much accomplished it on my own. Um, maybe it's not the absolute best it could be, but five feet per second, I'm not complaining about that. I wouldn't complain about 10 feet per second, but since I have the choice, I'll take five and see if it continues to shoot that well. Well guys, sorry that my Saturday low development didn't work out as smoothly as uh, I hoped it would. But I gave it a try. It didn't work out. I loaded up groups. That did work out. And now I know that what I want to shoot. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. You just got to figure out load development. Um, the biggest thing that kind of upset me is because I shot 16 bullets with bad chronograph data. is an absolute waste of time. I didn't get any data out of it. And the Saturday load development is designed to save you bullets, which all it did for me was cost me 17 to learn nothing. But, uh... It's all right. Live and learn. It's 17 bullets. It's not going to be the end of the world for me. So I loaded up a bunch of groups. I like 40 grains. Um, so if you're going to try a Saturday load development, make sure your chronograph's working that day. Maybe shoot a few more than four across the chronograph of uh, whatever kind of bullets that you're shooting. I mean, you can shoot your AR across your chronograph, some cheap bullets, and then maybe bump up to your big precision rifle if you have uh, both of those rifles available with the chronograph. I found some low standard deviations. At the end of the day, I'm happy with the group that I got. And I already know that it groups well. So that's something about the Saturday low development. Uh, there's a lot of people talking about Saturday low development and they show their first step in the process, which is shoot your 10 shot group. But I really wanna see some follow up guys. So if you're somebody on YouTube who's making videos, I wanna see you load up some charges in your flat spot and I wanna see, I wanna see how they group. Um, that's what's important here. Once you find out how they group, um, you find if it does group, then you can mess with your seating depth. If all goes really well, 10 shots for the Saturday low development, five shots for a group, if that groups well, 
then load up three more five shot groups and three different seating depths. I mean, you're looking at like 25 rounds and your low development's done. That's awesome. Um, three different trips, but you're not shooting a whole lot each trip. So I'd be really curious to see somebody who's done a Saturday low development, who got good data out of it. I want to see what their uh, bullets shoot and group like. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something about it. Unfortunately, mine didn't go that well, but I ended up figuring it out anyway. So we'll talk to you guys later.